I've been asking myself on occasion lately how I, may, how I may fare at the moment of death. I don't know why it's been coming into my mind. But sometimes when I'm lying in bed at night, going off to sleep, and uh, I sort of turn my awareness inwards. Something's been happening lately, which has been very, very interesting, where I turn my awareness inwards in a certain kind of way, and I can have a sense of accessing a kind of vast inner space. I can't really explain it. But I've been having this feeling that when I do that, it's a training. In a way, I'm training myself so that when I'm at the moment of death, I might have this facility, let's call it that, a sort of skill to, um, rather than blocking the experience, hardening against the experience, to turn towards it and to invite in um, this awareness of limitlessness, vastness, and to welcome that. You know, that's the kind of sense that I'm beginning to get. Um, I think it's very influenced by my breathworks work and my own life experience of working with a painful body. Um, because one of the main trainings that we do at breathworks is turning towards experience. Because it's such a strong human reflex. If you've got something you don't like, you just you push it away, you turn away. Whereas if you can learn to you know, turn towards it and meet it, um, embrace it even, then you're dealing with what's real rather than what's imagined. Um, and I think that's what one needs to do at the moment of death. That's what I, I would hope to be able to do at the moment of death. And to have a clear mind, yeah, to have a clear mind. So my Dharma practice is very, very much about training and having a clear mind, no matter what's happening. Um, and I do think the fact that I've lived with a painful body for many, many years has probably been very good preparation for the moment of death, because it won't be a surprise <laughs> if I'm lying there at death and my body's hurting. It will be like, oh yeah, well, here we go again, rather than that being a whole new experience that's freaking me out. It will just be, to some extent, familiar. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, very, I'm very intrigued at the moment about this turning inwards and finding space. That's very, it feels quite new and I seem to be able to access it quite easily. So I'm, I'm currently on a bit of a project of training myself in that. So when I'm sitting quietly or lying down or whatever, just turning my mind inwards and finding that space and dropping into that space so that when I imagine this could happen. I mean, who knows what happens at the moment of death. Um, but if I can access that space in the right way now in my practice, it's so much more attractive than this kind of material world, which is, it feels so hard edged. You know, sometimes the, the material world and our kind of our addiction to going for refuge to the substantial around us as an end in itself, you know, that is so painful. Sometimes I look at myself and other people and I think, God, you know, we're just, we are in a burning house, we're lost, you know. There's a, there's a line from a text, in a Tibetan text, which is some um, poor beings lost and confused wandering in the desert. You know, poor beings lost and confused wandering in the desert. And sometimes I, I, I can experience if I think this material world is everything, I think, you know, well, poor being, lost and confused. And if I have that taste of that kind of inner vastness, it's so much more real in a certain kind of way and appealing. That hopefully, you know, at the moment of death, I may be able to turn to that and welcome it and not be so addicted and attached to this three-dimensional world, which from a certain point of view is like a prison. From another point of view, it's everything. You know, one has to live in the world and enjoy the world and, and um, use it for one's practice, definitely. I'm not suggesting a kind of alienation from the world, but from a certain point of view, um, it's a prison. And I, I certainly don't believe that three-dimensional perception is everything. Definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully at the moment of death, I will have cultivated some clarity to stay with my pain, my distress, whatever's happening, and also to turn towards fastness.
who knows? But I don't feel that frightened of death. I used to, but now I sort of... It may be a relief, who knows, you know. And I, and I don't think this life is everything. I don't have any reason to believe it's not, but my intuition says that this life is a waking dream and death is like going to sleep at night and then the next life will be like waking up in the morning. I do sometimes think that we're all kind of lost in a sort of collective dream that we think is everything. It's crazy. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully I'll have some presence of mind and some excitement even, sense of adventure. Imagine just sort of letting go into the vastness of big mind. <laughs>